Hi there. This lesson is going to piece together everything we've learned about the respiratory system by looking at gas exchange. We're also going to look at how the respiratory and cardiovascular systems interact to form our cardiorespiratory system. To understand these concepts, we'll run through gas exchange, including external and internal gas exchange, and the role of the cardiorespiratory system during exercise. Let's get straight into it. Gas exchange is the process of getting oxygen to our body cells and carbon dioxide away from them. There are two types of gas exchange in our bodies, internal and external. Before we go any further, we need to understand a key process involved in gas exchange, diffusion. Diffusion states that gases will move from areas of high to low concentration to achieve a balance and is an essential piece of info for the rest of this lesson. Let's take a look at the two types of gas exchange. As I introduce them, I'm also going to throw in a quick reminder of our two types of circulation, which are closely related to the two types of gas exchange. If you're unsure what I'm talking about when I say types of circulation, be sure to check out the lessons on the cardiovascular system. First, let's talk about external gas exchange, which is how oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged between the blood and the lungs. External gas exchange happens during pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary circulation transports blood to and from the lungs. Deoxygenated blood, which is low in oxygen and higher in carbon dioxide, travels from the right ventricle to the capillaries that surround the alveoli. This is where external gas exchange occurs. That is, carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood to the alveoli from high to low concentration as there's higher concentration of CO2 in the blood compared to fresh air, whilst oxygen moves from the alveoli into the blood, again from an area of high to low concentration to achieve balance. This is because there's more oxygen in fresh air than blood that's already travelled around the body. We refer to the exchange of gases between the alveoli and the capillaries which surround them as external gas exchange because even though it's kind of happening inside us, the inside of our lungs is technically exposed to the external atmosphere. The features of the alveoli are particularly important for allowing gas exchange to take place. The alveoli are these little sacs right at the end of the bronchioles. The fact that there are so many little alveoli rather than just one large sac means there is a greater surface area inside the lungs. This means that more air can diffuse across the alveoli at any one time and gas exchange can occur at a faster rate. The result of this is that carbon dioxide can be exhaled into the air and gotten rid of and the blood is packed full of oxygen ready to be distributed to the rest of the body. Now let's look at internal gas exchange, which closely relates to systemic circulation. Systemic circulation transports oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of the body. This blood is pumped out of the left ventricle all the way to the capillaries surrounding our other cells like our muscles. This is where internal gas exchange occurs. It's called internal gas exchange since it happens inside our bodies. Oxygen diffuses from the blood in the capillaries to the cells, so from high to low oxygen concentration to achieve that balance. At the same time, carbon dioxide diffuses from the cell back into the blood. After internal gas exchange, we say that the blood is deoxygenated and it needs to be recycled. From the capillaries, the deoxygenated blood returns to the heart where the whole process can begin again. Now let's take a look at how these processes work during exercise to allow for movement and performance. As we can see through gas exchange, the cardiovascular system and the respiratory systems are linked, forming what we call our cardiorespiratory system. Our cardiorespiratory system has to work harder during exercise than at rest for two main reasons. To allow greater volumes of oxygen to reach the muscles, and to enable greater volumes of carbon dioxide, which is produced as a byproduct of energy production, to be removed. To achieve these two goals, we firstly need more air to begin with. So the rate of breathing increases to allow more air into the lungs and cardiac output increases so that this oxygen can be transported around the body at a faster rate. At the same time, the increased quantities of carbon dioxide diffuse out of the muscles and into the capillaries so that it can be taken back up to the lungs and removed from the body. 
During aerobic exercise, this process is happening a lot faster and in greater quantities than at rest so that oxygen can move to the muscles and aid in energy production. During anaerobic exercise, this process helps to move oxygen to the muscles so that lactic acid can begin to be metabolized and other waste products such as carbon dioxide can be removed, preventing fatigue. So hopefully now you can appreciate that there are two types of gas exchange. External gas exchange occurs in the lungs during pulmonary circulation. Here, blood loses carbon dioxide and gains oxygen as the blood travels through the capillaries around the alveoli. Internal gas exchange occurs in the rest of the body during systemic circulation. Here, oxygen moves from the blood in the capillaries to the body cells, whilst carbon dioxide moves from the body cells to the capillaries. Now, these processes are of course occurring all the time, but they happen more frequently when we exercise to meet increased oxygen and carbon dioxide removal demands from the body. The efficiency of these processes can influence performance as more efficient cardiorespiratory systems will enable greater endurance and higher intensities of exercise. And that's it for this lesson. See you soon.